Hey everyone, so last week I did a video on how to take your mid-journey or AI generated images and turn them into cinematic presentation videos. If you missed it, it's linked below, but today we're going into an even crazier direction. Uh, today we're gonna take our images and turn them into actual movies. Buckle up, this is wild. So today we're gonna to take a look at Gen 2 by Runway ML. It's a text to video generator that honestly is nothing short of amazing. We're gonna do a full walkthrough and go over some of the pros and cons of where the AI is right now. Plus I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks so that when you start using Gen 2, you'll be able to hit the ground running right away. Currently, Gen 2 is Discord based, which should make all of you Midjourney users feel quite at home. Generating videos is really, really simple. All you do is at the Gen 2 bot and type in a prompt of whatever it is that you wanna see. In this case, I did a man on a boat on the ocean near some islands, and this is the video that it generated. I mean, that's pretty crazy when you think about it, that man doesn't exist, that boat doesn't exist, that moment in time doesn't exist, and yet we have video of it. Currently, the output from a prompt is about four seconds, but I've got a couple of creative tricks that I'll show you later on in the video to extend that time out just a little bit. Overall, I would say the rendering happens fairly quickly. I think the longest that I've waited so far is about two minutes, which is, pretty remarkable when you think about what it's actually doing. Your video will output at a resolution of 768 by 448 in a 16-9 aspect ratio. There currently isn't a way to change that aspect ratio to say like 916 for vertical videos or 2-1 for, you know, a big cinema scope kind of vibe to it yet. I mean, it's still early in, so I presume that will happen at some point and it's gonna be awesome when it does. Now that said, we do have commands to upscale our video to a higher resolution and we can also interpolate our footage via a command to kind of get rid of that choppiness. We're gonna take a look at that in one second. So let's take a look at how that looks with a New York City scene. So I generated this video using the prompt, New York City street, busy people walking, and I utilize the upscale and interpolate commands, again, dash dash, upscale and dash dash interpolate. And it returned to me a video with the size 1536 by 896, which, you know, is a pretty decent size. So let's take a look at that real quick. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. So I did just want to briefly point out that a few weeks ago, I was thinking about doing a video on text to video and the level of output that we were getting at that point in time via the various tools was this, this is like literally nearly the same prompt. It was New York city street. And this was what we got. So, and, and now we're, you know, and now we're here. We've come a long way in a very, very short amount of time. So I can't even imagine where we're gonna be, you know, two years from now. So having done our establishing shot, I wanted to start populating our city street a little bit. So I prompted a businessman walking on a phone and this is the video that we got. Um, that's pretty crazy remarkable. Um, yeah, there's some jank in the hands, but you know, that's to be expected. We're very early into this technology, but Still, that's super, super, super impressive. And just to give you an idea of the difference between running upscale and interpolate on versus off, here's the same prompt with those commands turned off. So with upscale and interpolate turned off, we get this, which my God, look at the size of that phone. That's amazing. I hope AI weirdness never completely goes away because I, I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, overall though, you can see that there's a lot more choppiness between the frames and our resolution is definitely taking a hit. So I continued on and generated a few more videos and strung the whole thing out and cut it together. And this is what we got. So yeah, in about 20 minutes, I had a video sequence of an alien invasion of New York City without ever leaving my desk. And I gotta say, for the most part, despite the fact that there's a couple of, you know, weird AI things, like this guy's got way too many buttons on his jacket and, you know, her hand is a little bit weird. Um, those are things that I don't think you notice when things are in motion. I mean, there is the one issue of this girl in the background, her eye gets a little bit wonky, um, but that's pretty nitpicky considering, you know, what is happening here, that this is just a text input and then video is being outputted. Um, but now we're gonna take a look at taking reference images and using those as part of your prompt to really hone in on the cinematic vision that you're looking for. 
before we jump into the next section, I would briefly like to invite you to hit the like and subscribe button if you have not had the chance to yet. Additionally, I want to thank everybody that's donated uh, to the Midjourney cheat sheets that have appeared in previous videos. Uh, honestly, your support means a lot to me. I really, truly do thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, okay, let's jump in. Bouncing over to Midjourney, last week we created a sequence of about seven images to create kind of a gothic, Victorian spooky story. We then took all of those images and brought them into Wondershare Filmora to do some parallaxing and masking to create a cinematic presentation. Uh, the video ended up being about 30 seconds long. Let's take a look at that real quick. If you want to see the full process on how that video was made, that link is below. So taking our images that we generated in Midjourney and using them as reference images in Gen 2 is fairly simple, but like anything else, it kind of you know gets a little more complex as we go along. So the simplicity part is just hitting this plus button and then uploading your reference image as you would if you were using Midjourney and using an image prompt. Now you'll still need to add a text prompt. And this is actually a pretty good tip that came out of the Gen 2 Discord discussions is you could just type in your own text prompt, but you kind of get better results, oddly enough, if you take your image and run it over to Clip Interrogator. I'll have a link to Clip Interrogator down below, but basically you just drag your image in, you hit submit, and then it almost kind of functions as the describe feature in Midjourney. It just analyzes through the image and then comes up with a prompt based off of it. So my initial run without Clip Interrogator uh, gave us this video, which, yeah, it's not quite working right. <laughs> Taking the clip interrogator prompt, uh, which came back with an old mansion with a dark cloud over it, dark and spooky themes, light green and amber, coastal scenery. It actually had more, but I, I kind of whittled it down because there was a lot of sort of irrelevant stuff in there. And then also playing around with a command called the CFG scale, which is dash dash CFG underscore scale. What you can think of that as is almost like the stylized command in mid journey, which is the higher you go, the more it will look at your reference image, but the more unstable your output is going to be. The lower you go, the less consideration it's gonna to take to your reference image, but the more stable your video is going to be. So running at a CFG scale of 20 got us this, which is cool. It's not quite what I was looking for, but um, yeah, pretty neat. A super dark actually, um, but is definitely closer than that first one was and didn't have that weird ending. So another quick note is that you can't just link your reference image. Um, otherwise you end up with something completely insane. Um, you actually have to re-upload your reference image each time. If you try to give them a link, it basically gets super weird from that point. So we had our house image that I just linked and then, and then our prompt, and then this was the output, which is completely wrong. Um, hilarious, but wrong. Ultimately, once I figured that out and actually weirdly enough stopped playing with the CFG scale and left it at default, I got something that I actually really liked. So it goes to show sometimes default is best. Um, so this was actually the output that we got. And I was pretty happy with that. So moving on to the second shot, this one was nailed almost right away. The prompt was a woman in a black dress walks upstairs in the background, storm clouds slowly move. And uh, the first output was this. I did run it one more time just to see and actually ended up with something that I liked even more. And we got this shot, which I actually, I like this a little bit more. The, the angle is just a little bit more dramatic. It just feels more cinematic. Um, yeah, I like this one. That's another tip is that if you're trying to get shots like this, if you put in cinematic action in the front of your prompt, you're more apt to get kind of more cinematic looking things. So our third image is where we started to run into some real trouble. Um, you know, we have a hand reaching out to a door and I think as we all know, AI does not do hands well. So um, there was a lot of like David Cronenberg-esque uh, video outputs coming. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Yeah, there was this guy. There was this one that just ignored the hand altogether. We had this one, which I don't even know what's happening here. <laughs> Uh, this guy, which, yeah, again, that's 
fairly horrific. And this one was my favorite. Um, that's just super surreal. So the walking down the hallway shot was one that I was really curious to see how Gen 2 would handle, considering it's our our sort of our face reveal shot. Um, and Gen 2 really didn't disappoint. So this is the shot that it gave back, um, which is, I think, pretty good. It really does kind of capture the essence of our character. So let's take all of this, string it all together, and create a film version of our cinematic presentation from last week. So overall, I think that's pretty amazing. It actually reminds me a lot of experimental films that I saw when I was in college and maybe even made one or two experimental films like it when I was in college. Um, but overall, yeah, it's not a one-to-one -one recreation of our original presentation, but that's okay because we're essentially changing from one medium to another. And more importantly, it nailed the tone, which I think has a large part to do with sort of storyboarding this thing beforehand in Midjourney. And then ultimately for the problem shots, like you know, like the, the door here in particular, uh, and for some pacing things, I think that the best way to go is to actually use a combination of Gen 2 output and some of the Dia Show stuff from Mid Journey. Uh, like in this case, just swapping out the, um, the door handle for our Dia Show version. And, uh, you know, just giving some pacing issues by using some of the Mid Journey stuff, I think, creates uh, an overall better aesthetic presentation. As a final experiment, I wanted to see how Gen 2 would handle animation. Uh, I caught a couple of episodes of Samurai Jack recently again, still holds up by the way, uh, so that was on my brain. Um, so I just went over to Mid Journey and generated a Samurai Jack-esque um, character and ran that with the prompt um, Samurai Walks to Camera, Autumn Forest concept art, Samurai Jack, um, and ended up getting this, which it's okay. Um, it's animated. Um, it's not quite what I was looking for. So close-ups, it really wasn't handling very well um, with the image reference. So that was one. And then here was another one. But I did ultimately land on this and this, which I thought were cool. Not, you know, in the Samurai Jack style, but had an aesthetic that I actually thought was pretty cool. So I'm always pretty big on narrative when I'm doing like these little experiments. It doesn't have to be anything grand or anything. It's just kind of a little short story. And so as I was generating out these ideas, I came up with the story of a samurai coming across another samurai and they duel. It's very, very simple. Um, so let's take a look at how it ultimately ended up looking. <music> Ultimately, I think that came out kind of cool and sort of in that minimalist Samurai Jack style, although it didn't ape the aesthetics of it necessarily. So one thing to note is that the sword fighting sequence uh, was not actually Gen 2. This was actually Gen 1. The reason being is that Gen 2 apparently has not been trained on Samurai's sword fighting. So uh, you can't get that animation. It just ends up being characters just standing there. But yeah, overall, uh, I think it kind of works. I mean, I think maybe if I had spent some more time on it, it could have been a little more dramatic and cool looking, but it works. Personally, I'm very excited about all of this. This is kind of the moment that I've been waiting for since, you know, those original Dali images first came out, you know, and I was thinking to myself, man, I can't wait until you can add, you know, motion to those pictures. And, you know, here we are only much, much sooner than I had anticipated. So Gen 2 is currently in beta. If you're looking to get access, I would recommend joining the Discord. Uh, the link to that is below. And honestly, just kind of hanging out and being nice. Usually about once a week, they open up the door to let people in. So, you know, if you're part of the community and you're not being a jerk, you know, you've got a pretty good chance of 
getting in. Other than that, it probably won't be too long until Gen 2 is publicly released. I want to say the beta for Gen 1 lasted about a month or a month and a half or so. Um, so alternatively, you could just wait it out. In the meantime, I do invite you to stick around and watch another video from the channel. My name's Tim. I thank you for watching.